In the heat of the abolitionist debate, one of the most controversial leaders was William Lloyd Garrison. Garrison was a staunch abolitionist who used his newspaper, The Liberator, to express his opinions. In The Liberator, he fought for equality for all and refused to back down and moderate his language. Garrison had the ambitions of a writer at an early age. He was born in Newburyport, Massachusetts on December 10, 1805. In 1818, when Garrison was 13 years old, he was appointed to a seven-year apprenticeship as a writer and editor under Ephraim W. Allen, the editor of the Newburyport Herald. Eventually, Garrison earned enough money to purchase his own newspaper, the Newburyport Essex Current, which he later renamed to the Newburyport Free Press. These seemingly minor decisions were huge steps for Garrison as they laid the path for him to express his beliefs and spread them to others. Garrison's passion for abolition began in March of 1828 when he met a man named Benjamin Lundy. Benjamin Lundy was one of the first members of the abolitionist movement and was an inspiration to Garrison and many other abolitionists. After meeting Lundy, Garrison was offered a job as co-editor of his newspaper, which he gladly accepted. Lundy's newspaper, The Genius of Universal Emancipation, was very successful. Lundy was the perfect mentor for Garrison as they shared similar goals and motives. Despite having to eventually leave Lundy's newspaper, Garrison was forever changed and truly motivated by Lundy's example to help banish slavery. Garrison vowed that as long as he lived, he would oppose slavery and would do so until all slaves were free and all people were equal. On January 1st of 1831, William Lloyd Garrison published the first issue of The Liberator. In The Liberator, Garrison said, I will be as harsh as truth and as uncompromising as justice. I do not wish to think or speak or write with moderation. I am in earnest. I will not equivocate. I will not excuse. I will not retreat a single inch, and I will be heard. Garrison also included a famous poem in the first issue which demonstrated his undoubtful passion for equality in the world. Oppression. I have seen thee face to face, and met thy cruel eye and cloudy brow. But thy sole withering glance I fear not now. For dread to prouder feelings doth give place of deep abhorrence. Scoring the disgrace by thy brutalizing sway, I swear, while lifeblood warms my throbbing veins, still to oppose and thwart, with heart and hand, our burst and freedom rules the rescued land. Trampling oppression and his iron rod, such is the vow I take, so help me God. The first issue of The Liberator, his poem set the tone for the paper and showed people his bold and steadfast voice. He was not timid with how he described slavery and made sure to describe its barbarity in full detail. To the reader, his dedication to ending slavery is clearly evident as he vows that as long as he lives, he will oppose slavery. Garrison wrote The Liberator with the voice of a hardcore abolitionist partisan. He spoke his mind and never balked when describing the horrors of slavery. To show his extreme distaste for slavery, Garrison often repeated words such as bloody, wicked, and brutal to create a serious and intense voice. He once wrote that the whole scope of the English language is inadequate to describe the horrors and impieties of slavery. Nonetheless, Garrison chose his words carefully so that he could spread his views and persuade his viewers, for his words were his weapons against oppression. Garrison wasn't afraid of his opposition. He often took shots at people who opposed his beliefs of equality. He called slave owners patriotic hypocrites and treasonable disunionists. He even singled out some who were pro-slavery, such as Kentucky Senator Henry Clay, whom he called a pitiable object and an awful curse. He even wrote that Massachusetts politician Daniel Webster is a lick spittle of slaveholders because he supported an act that compromised on slavery. Garrison's strong opinions and bold writing made him the enemy of many, even some in his own city of Boston. On October 21st, 1835, these people's hate for Garrison and the abolitionist movement boiled over. During one of Garrison's public speakings, an angry mob seized him and dragged him with a rope around his neck through the city. Luckily for Garrison, this demonstration wasn't able to escalate as Boston Mayor Theodore Lyman intervened. Lyman locked Garrison up in the Levitt Street Jail for protection from the mob. After spending the night in jail, Garrison slipped back to home. However, he wasn't in any way intimidated by any of these people, and he kept printing the Liberator with his steadfast opinion intact. He knew it wasn't going to be easy, as he wrote in one issue of The Liberator, My task is hard, for I'm charged to save man from his brothers, to redeem the slave. 
At the start of the Civil War, Garrison subdued his peaceful pacifist beliefs and supported the Emancipation Proclamation, and thus put the emancipation of slaves ahead of his principles of nonviolence. During the war, Garrison kept publishing The Liberator, and on April 9, 1865, his dreams began to come true as the Confederacy was defeated and the slaves were freed in Union states through the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Shortly thereafter, his dreams came true and all the slaves were freed by the passage of the 13th Amendment. Garrison had started the newspaper to eradicate slavery, and so after 35 years of continuous publication, on December 25, 1865, he published his last issue of The Liberator and announced that, My vacation as an abolitionist is ended. Garrison's legacy was truly created with his blood, sweat, and tears. His utter determination shaped his actions and his legacy. Although he is often denounced as a radical, one cannot just absolve him of any credit for success of the abolitionist movement. For 35 years he worked tirelessly for immediate emancipation and never hesitated, wavered, or turned back from this goal. He marched, spoke, and even burned a copy of the Constitution all in pursuit of the goal of emancipation. His actions may have been extreme, but through the, his use of the Liberator and his infamous actions, Garrison ignited the abolitionist debate and played a major role in abolition gaining national recognition. Garrison's constant discussion of the morals and ethics of slavery spurred the anti-slavery zeitgeist that became prevalent in antebellum North. Garrison was a huge inspiration to many people, and through his writing many people began to truly abhor slavery. He inspired the common man while also becoming an icon to other abolitionist leaders. He and Frederick Douglass, the former slave turned abolitionist, became good friends, and many of Douglass' ideas and beliefs were the direct result of Garrison's influence on him. According to the Notable Name database, because of the Liberator, anti-slavery societies greatly multiplied throughout the North, and many men of influence, both in the church and in the state, were one to the cause. In 1832, Garrison founded the New England Anti-Slavery Society, the first organization dedicated to ending slavery, which gained a copious amount of members following its establishment. The following year, the American Anti-Slavery Society was also established and Garrison was appointed president. Garrison was a revolutionary. According to David Blight, professor of American history at Yale University, there is no more sig significant reformer in the 19th century than William Lloyd Garrison. To truly understand his legacy, one has to remember that Garrison lived in a world where individuals of one skin color could be bought and sold solely because of the pigment of their skin. Garrison saw past all the discrimination of his time and believed that equality could be achieved. He disregarded the consequences, including physical harm and ostracization, and passionately fought for his beliefs. His courage, passion, and drive are honorable and commendable. Garrison catalyzed the fight for racial equality that we are still fighting today. He encouraged the common man to fight for his beliefs and demonstrated the power that one individual can have.